Hi, okay, so about me, I run online web and IT operations for Zalora.com. Uh, we are among the largest online fashion retailer in Southeast Asia. My team is responsible for uptime of our portfolio applications and the infrastructure running them. Uh, I co-founded BigData.sg, uh, which is a community of data nerds from Singapore. I'm also part of Singapore Cloud Forum. Uh, which is a registered society to facilitate community initiatives in Singapore's cloud computing scene. Previously, I used to be with wiki.com. Uh, wiki is a global TV site and I used to take care of the technology operations of all the portfolio applications. I am a Ruby programmer and uh, my GitHub handle is Parolkar. When I was thinking about the title of this talk, I came across an interesting article from GigaOM which was leaning perfectly into what I wanted to cover today. The question here is, what does it mean when someone says running a data center like Google's? Google is the company of our lifetime which happened to face the engineering challenges of enormous scale before anyone gets there and hence they learned to address the issues ahead of time. This talk is not about Google, it's about a piece of technology which becomes integral part of your data center at scale. While Google has openly talked about their technology, uh, they have still been a bit secretive about few important pieces of their infrastructure. If you ever wondered how Google is able to deploy and scale tons of services, it's this piece of technology called Borg I'm not sure if this is a real name or not. Uh, this was recently revealed in an article in Wired. The job of this technology as revealed is to provide an orchestration layer which allows developers to package the application and throw it into a massive pool of resources which takes care of scaling it. Google recently released a paper describing the new version of this software called Omega. This paper is definitely as important as the other MapReduce and Big Table papers you have seen in the past. Okay, so enough about Google, let's talk, talk about you. What are your computing needs today? If you are an internet company hmm, like social network, you might have some set of user facing applications where people upload their cat pictures or videos and then you might have analytics applications which require Hadoop or Strom or something similar and you might have some servers running background jobs to optimize those cat pictures if you're a bank you might have a bunch of heterogeneous enterprise services running on proprietary environment and then you have a data center that hosts all of your applications and your resources are statically partitioned. What does it mean? You have a definite amount of computing resources, a definite amount of servers. Your processes and applications are statically allocated to these resources. But hey, your business is dynamic. You soon figure out that people are uploading the cat images during end of the day uh, when they are back from their offices and hence more background workers are needed at that time of the day. So you negotiate with your CFO for more budget and two new servers and you have utilization graph that looks like this and your data team comes to you uh, saying they need more power for their application. But this time, your CFO has a complaint that you are underutilizing your existing resources. So you decide to share the resources. During the day, you, your resource allocation looks like this. And during the night, your allocation looks like that. And with this, you are able to meet this scalability demands of your services. So what's happening here is, is that you look at resource consumption and reallocate for resources to be fully utilized. This is where management of resources kicks in. 
on top of that failures happen in data centers and that requires more data center management things can get complicated when you try to add another parameter to this puzzle which is availability when one server catches the fire you need to re reallocate quickly to retain the availability most of us don't want to deal with this if you are an ops guy you know how painful these things can be when they are statically partitioned but thankfully there are ways to deal with this rather than looking at your data center like this what if you could see your data center like this what if you could visualize your data center like a single gigantic pool of resources this should remind you of something you're already familiar with the operating system to realize this illusion we need something that gives us level of interaction as a kernel and that is mesos mesos is that orchestration layer it is this cluster manager that provides efficient resource isolation and sharing across distributed applications so how does it work in world of mesos this is your data center and the entity with which you interact in mesos is the mesos master while we can have multiple masters for this example let's just have one all other nodes would run mesos slaves now when you want to run application in mesos the application needs to be wrapped in something called a framework we can think of a framework as an additional piece of code which speaks the language of mesos and describes the demands of your application you register your framework with mesos master and it will reach out to slaves in order to grab the resources to run your application and you don't need to worry about which node is running your application when failures happen mesos knows what to do and spin up app instances elsewhere you add more frameworks and all that just works currently mesos comes with following frameworks but you can always write your own the common aspects of frameworks are that they all need to run process simultaneously handle process failures and optimize execution every framework has a scheduler an executor it requests for resources and releases resources and has some working states at any given time now while you can go and write your own framework in no time the mesos community has given you an another interesting framework or rather a meta framework called marathon it is designed for long running services and can launch anything that can be launched in a standard shell it can also launch other frameworks too which means rather than interacting with mesos master directly you interact with marathon which spins up your framework and in turn your framework spins up new tasks let me give you a quick glance on how all this looks like i'm going to run a demo on my virtual machine and this is just for you to get the feel of what mesos and marathon is okay so what i have here is a virtual machine with centos 6.4 and a pre-configured mesos i've installed mesos as well as uh, marathon uh, from their trunk so i have the latest uh, code available with me in order to start mesos master you just start a uh, daemon and as soon as you start the process it selects itself as a master and provides you a web interface which is usually available on 5050 port uh, and it shows you number of active slaves offers frameworks um, shows you what is the overall resources you have on your cluster let's go ahead and start a slave so to the slave process we specify where the master is and that's about it and you can go back and see uh, that mesos master shows you one activated slave 
and uh, an added CPU and mem memory resources and it shows you my newly, re newly registered slave now we go ahead and start marathon as soon as you start marathon that gives you a web interface as well and you can see that uh, marathon is a registered framework for mesos now if we go to marathon ui you can see one of my old sample app let's not touch that and start our own uh, new app let's call it app cloud asia and as you know we can launch anything that can be launched in a shell i'm taking an example of a sleep command let's sleep for three seconds let's give two meg memory to this process and five instances now the app has been launched and in Mesos UI we can see under the frameworks we can go into marathon framework and see our application running currently we have only one slave running so of course uh, it's a very artificial condition but this gives you an idea about how this looks like thanks if you found this useful uh, write me a note at abhishek at parukar.com